Hey guys, Krishna Madhav Tuition here, and in this video, I'm going to show you the solution for question 5 from the May 2014 PUA Paper 2. If you want to see the solutions for the other questions on this paper, I'm going to put a card up there and a link in the description below. So be sure to check those out as well. Okay, before we jump into the question, just know that we are going to be asked to prepare a couple of things. One is a manufacturing account and two is a trading account. So I can't put up two cards at the same time, but what I will do is I'm gonna put a card up there to carry you to my manufacturing account video. So if you are not familiar at all with manufacturing accounts, I suggest you check that out before you watch this video so you get a handle on the basics and the underlying concepts and where things go and why they go there. The other thing they ask us for is a trading account. So I'm gonna put a link to that and the manufacturing account uh, video in the description below. So be sure to check those out as well before you check out this video if you're not too familiar with either of those topics. If, however, you are familiar with both of those topics and you're raring to go, let's get into it. Okay, so the question reads as follows. JB Manufacturing Company produces athletics equipment. The following information was provided for the year ended 31st December 2013. Study the information carefully and answer the questions that follow. Okay, so what have they given us? So they've given us a set of stuff here. Purchases of direct materials, rent, power, carriage inwards on raw materials, insurance and factory equipment, direct expenses. I don't know why people keep scratching all the stuff here. Factory wages. Hmm, interesting. Indirect materials, depreciation on factory equipment, factory manager salary, giant salary, sales, and property taxes on factory building. Now, I am not entirely sure why they have two columns making it look like a trial balance, like they are debit items and credit items. Um, everything here is a debit item. So yeah, okay, whatever. In any case, let's take a look at the additional information now, shall we? So always be sure to read all of your information, especially the additional information. That's going to give you some in important information for you to facilitate doing the question, right? So it says inventory valuation. Now, for manufacturing accounts, you have three sets of inventory. You have direct materials, finished goods, and work in process. Now, you have two columns. One says 01 January 2013. Those are your open and stock balances. And the other one says 31st December 2013. Those are your closing stock balances. All right. What else are they telling us here? So they're saying that rent and power are to be shared as follows. 75% to factory and 25% to administration. So what that means is that the figure, figures for rent and power are going to have to be multiplied by these percentages. And in your manufacturing account, you'll put the 75% because that belongs to the factory. 25%, that would go in your income statement if you were doing an income statement. And it says the janitor spends 80% of his time cleaning the factory. So again, that's a way to share up the janitor's cost between the factory, the manufacturing account, and the income statement, the non-manufacturing side. Okay, so just to be clear, as I mentioned, the question does specifically ask us to prepare a manufacturing account for JB Manufacturing for the year ended 31st December 2013. And they want us to clearly show these things here. Prime cost, total factory overheads, cost of production, all for 16 marks. And then we have to follow it up with a trading account for the company to determine its gross income or gross profit. And that's only four marks. Okay, so let's get into these solutions. All right, so as per usual, please head up your statements. Now, in the more recent CSEC part of the questions, I've seen them put headings for these statements. So if they do give you headings, don't worry to write them over. That's not necessary. If they just give you space, but don't put the headings in for you, please write in your headings. They will give you either a mark or a half mark. And that could be the difference between a one and a two or a pass and a fail. So make sure to put in your headings, please. Okay, so how do we start off a manufacturing account? So the point of the manufacturing account is to calculate the cost of goods produced or cost of goods manufactured. You have a few components. One is your prime cost. The other is overheads. And we have this thing called an adjustment for work in process. For prime cost, you have direct materials, direct labor, and sometimes other direct expenses. The direct materials cost is literally and exactly the cost of goods sold from the trading account, that same calculation, but just on materials. So let's head up cost of direct materials consumed. So the first thing we're gonna need is the opening stock. So we're gonna go across to the additional information. We're gonna look for direct materials and see that the opening stock value is 7,500. So we're gonna put that inside here. Inventory at start of direct materials, 7,500. Next, we need purchases. So that actually was the first item in the list of balances that they give us, 65,000. And as we are here, 
I'm going to also draw your attention to the fact that we have carriage inwards on the, on raw materials. Sorry. So direct materials and raw materials are sometimes used interchangeably, but I think they should have been a bit more consistent here to avoid any confusion. So we are going to add those two together because the carriage inwards is your delivery charge on your raw materials. So it forms part of the cost of goods purchased. So you have your purchases, you're going to add your carriage inwards and that's going to give us 67,000, which we are going to add to the inventory at start to give us our cost of direct materials available. That's this item right here. From that, we're going to have to subtract closing stock. Now the closing stock of direct materials was 4,300. So we are going to put that up inside of here. We're going to subtract it and that's going to give us 70,200, which is the cost of materials consumed. So that's direct materials. We also need direct labor. Now, quite often they don't tell us direct labor outright, but they give us factory wages. So wages, especially factory wages, are usually considered direct labor. If they give you factory salaries, salaries are not direct. Okay, it's just, that's just something to be mindful of. So factory wages, let's put that in 30,000 across here. And just above the, the factory wages, we're actually seeing direct expenses factory of 1,500. So that's going to go there as well. And that's the, those, those are the three items that will give us what you call the prime cost, right? The sum of all the direct costs is called the prime cost because those are the primary costs of production materials, labor, and well, whatever other direct expenses. Now, of course, we have to consider the overheads, factory overhead, like your rent, your power, all that other stuff, because of course the materials are not gonna, I mean, I mean labor needs somewhere to work, right? So that's where it, it, the, the overheads are so called because it literally is the cost of whatever is overhead, the cost of rent in the factory or the depreciation of the building, the depreciation of the machinery, all that other stuff, right? Factory overhead is also sometimes referred to as indirect cost. So if we go across to the list of balances, we're seeing rent, we're seeing power, 6,000 and 10,000. Now don't forget we had a note a bit below. What did that note say? It says that rent and power are to be shared as follows. 75% to factory, 25% to admin. So 75% of factory. So these two figures of 6,000 and 10,000, you're going to have to find 75% of those items. And that's what's going to be included in your manufacturing account. So 75% of rent is 4,500. 75% of power is 7,500. Okay. Next, what do we have? We have insurance on factory equipment, 3,500. We had no additional information to consider there, so that goes as it is. Next, we had indirect materials used, factory depreciation on factory equipment, factory manager's salary, and janitor's salary. Now, three, the first three things that can be put wholesale, but the janitor's salary, don't forget, we had a note that said the janitor spends 80% of his time cleaning the factory. So we are going to put in indirect materials, depreciation of factory equipment, and the factory matter salary as they are. So let's put them 7,000, 2,500, 12,000. For janitor, we're going to find 80% of 8,000, which is 6,400. Now there is one more item, which is the property tax on the factory building. And we're going to put that in here as 800. That's, and that's all of the costs that are attributable directly to the factory. And that's going to give us total factory over as a 44,200, which we will, of course, add to your prime costs. And that's going to give us the total cost incurred in the current period or total current production costs. Now, we have to adjust for work in process. Work in process refers to goods or products that were in process of being made but incomplete. So the work in process at start, those costs are brought forward to the current period and are combined with the current period's costs. So what we have to do is we have to add the work in process at start. The work in process at end, we have to deduct that because those costs are carried forward to another period. So the net adjustment here is 400 or negative 400. Now, you don't have to have these two items here and then a subtotal. You could have them in the same column across here, or you could even have one line saying work in process adjustment with the two figures being um, well combined arithmetically in a bracket here. So there's no one right format for the manufacturing account. Don't let anybody force it to use one specific one. There's no one right one. Okay, so that'll give us the cost of production. So that's actually what they wanted us to show. They wanted us to show prime costs, total factory overheads, and cost of production. So we have done exactly what they wanted us to do. So now we have to show them the trading account. So let's take a look at that. Okay, so for our trading account, don't forget to head up, right? Name of the entity, name of the statement, period to which it applies. The first thing we need is sales. Do we have sales? Yes, we do. 190,000. 
So that's sales. Less cost of sales or cost of goods sold, depending on how you were taught. So we kind of went through this calculation a bit earlier with the raw materials section, right? The cost of raw materials consumed. So we need open and stock of finished goods. That's going to be down here. So we have 21,000 and we're seeing 24,000 too as the closing stock. But let's, let's stick with the open and stock for now. 21,000, right? Now, normally we'd add purchases here. But because we are manufacturing goods, we are not buying goods. So the cost of goods produced or cost of goods manufactured, the cost of production, that figure replaces the purchases figure. And that was 145,500. That was what we just found in the manufacturing account. So the whole point of the manufacturing account is to find that figure. When we add those two things together, we get the cost of, oh sorry, that shouldn't say direct materials. That should say cost of goods, sorry, one second, cost of goods, <laughs> ah, goods available for sale. Right. And then from there now, we simply have to subtract the closing stock of finished goods, which we saw was 24200 And we're going to get cost of goods, cost of goods sold. I guess I copied and pasted this and didn't pay attention. Hmm. So not a good idea, right? Cost of goods sold. And then that is, will be subtracted from the sales figure. And that will give us a gross profit of 47700 And that's basically it for this question. Okay, guys. So there you have it. That's the solution for question 5 from the May 2014 PUA Paper 2. If you have any questions about it, please feel free to leave that in the comment section below and I'll get back to you when I have a chance. If you want to check out any more videos, I'm going to put some cards up here. Don't forget to subscribe and be sure to check out my website where you'll find some PUA handouts that you might find useful. Anyway guys, as per usual, thank you so much for watching. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you next time. Bye.